Uh, hello and welcome to the stream. Uh, welcome to Introduction to Git Part 2. Uh, today, our, today, our topic for today um, is going to be uh, branching and remotes. Uh, so yesterday we've talked about um, the basics of Git, how you use um, Git on your local machine, how you uh, move files between uh, the different stages that we've um, covered yesterday and how you can fix things and so on and so forth. Um, today, we're going to uh, take a look into uh, the distributed nonlinear workflow and especially how you can share your code with others via pushing it to a remote repository or um, sharing your history. Okay, uh, so um, let me give you a quick overview. Um, as already mentioned, today we're not going to talk about your local repository, but about uh, remote repositories. And in order to talk about what remote repositories are, we need to cover uh, what branches are. Um, branches um, is, as I mentioned yesterday, uh, the key thing of Git branches and how you can easily work with branches and merge together different things that you have developed on different branches is the key feature of Git. Is that is the key feature um, that makes it so successful um, if, if you compare it to the other version control systems. Um, but when you're working with um, div different states of, um, of your source code, you can run into problems if they are conflicting, and these, um, if that happens, that is what we call a merge conflict, and we're going to take a look into that as well. Um, some other things that are quite helpful when you're working with different branches, and especially if you're working with other people, um, uh, are the stash and, and the reference log. So these are some, some nice little additional features that we're also going to take a look at. And we're going to top things off um, with talking about remotes in the very end. Um, so we're going to take a look at uh, how git push and pull is actually working. So what, what what's really happening in the background. And uh, as, as I have prepared for you, as I had prepared for you yesterday, um, I'm once again uh, giving you a, a sort of a recap with some questions on my very last slide. Uh, and just so that I've mentioned it, um, I once again have the stream chat open, so feel free to interrupt me at any point. I will try to answer your questions uh, right away. Okay, so the roadmap, um, as I already said, yesterday was all about local repositories. Today we're going to talk about remote repositories. And as a reminder, tomorrow is going to be about miscellaneous stuff, so other cool features that Git um, provides us with. Okay, so <clears throat> Git, I guess um, uh, those who are quite familiar with Git already, or even the novice users are definitely familiar with that particular command here. So Git pull origin master, I've renamed it here to main. Um, for reasons that we're not going to talk about now, but um, we're going to basically break down uh, what this command is uh, consists of. So we're interested in what the remote is, in that case it's origin, and what the branch is, um, in that case main. Uh, so let me pull up uh, the graphic from yesterday once again. So yesterday we only looked at a very small part, which was your local machine. And today we're going to take a, the uh, more bigger picture. So uh, what's happening when you push things to a different server and how you work with your colleagues and your team. Because that is what um, Git is mostly about. Okay, um, short recap. Um, yesterday we looked into what a commit is. So we looked into what, how we move different files between stages and how we then commit. So like, this is the final thing in our workflow. So you do some changes, 
you add things that fit together into the, the staging area, and then you commit these things. And these commits um, are always associated with a so-called commit hash. We've, uh, we've seen that too yesterday, and we're going to make use of those um, very often today. Um, but as I've mentioned quite often, Git saves a history of your project. Um, but as we also discussed, Git is very useful for with a distributed nonlinear workflow. So you're not actually having just a simple single history, a linear history of what your project has went through, like the different versions, but you are also capable um, to let Git work with different, different um, histories, mainly on different branches. Okay, but what is a branch? Um, you're going to see these um, icons quite often today. Um, so what, what you can see here is basically commit A, commit B, commit C, commit D, commit E. And this is what our linear history has looked like yesterday. So that could, for example, be something like this. Uh, commit A is actually our initial commit. And for commits later, we had to fix some kind of a bug. And after fixing that bug, we've introduced a cool new feature. Um, but that means that we're sort of restricted to just having that one history, which is um, which, which we can do much better with br different branches. And using different branches would look something like that. So you would still have your main history, like your main sequential history. That, you've, uh, that I've got depicted here with the main branch. So you've got one pointer to commit E, which is on the main branch. But uh, at point D in our history, we have diverged and moved away and worked on something different, an important feature, for example. And when we were currently at commit C, someone found a bug, uh, an issue, uh, not yet the bug, someone found an issue, and we have diverged in order to fix that bug on a different branch. So why are we using these different branches? Um, these different branches basically give you a new sandbox that you can work in. It's going to give you a different working tree and a different set of commits that you push your commits to, or that you commit to. <clears throat> which is quite handy because if something's not working out on a different branch, you can just scrap these things away. Or if everything's working fine, you have the security of not messing with your main branch where you know that everything's fine and everything's working. And of course, um, when you're working in a team, you can't really have such inter in interferences where you, we would need to have everyone be working on that main branch. Um, so you use different branches for that as well. So um, every team member is going to have his or her own branch. And in the end, you're going to merge everything into that one big main branch where everything should be working, everything should be tested. And this is what you would then deploy or give to the, um, give to the public. Okay, so as I already said, what is a branch? A branch is basically a new working directory, a new sandbox, but it's going to have the same version of files. So when you branch away from a certain commit, you're basically telling just, just telling it to um, create a new reference for you. And with that new reference, you're going to be able to create a different branch of commits. Okay, got an error in here. Um, so what the branches allow you to do is it applies these changes only to your new working directory, basically. Um, and internally, a branch is just a reference to a particular commit. And as soon as we have played um, with the git branch command and the git switch command, what we're going to see in a few minutes, we're going to see what that actually means. 
having different references to different branches. Okay, so in order to create a new branch, we just simply call the git branch command with the branch name, with the new branch name that you want. And what that actually is doing is, as you can see it here in the graphics on the slide, git branch will only create a new reference to that commit that you're currently on. So if we were on branch main and called git branch feature dash x, y, it would just create a new reference, nothing else. And in order to switch to that um, different branch, we're going to use the git switch command. <clears throat> so after um, we have created the branch and git switch to it, our head is going to point to that very new branch. Okay, um, so let's actually take a look at how that would look like. Um, I've got our um, Git repository from yesterday here, and I hope that it's at the same status as we have left off yesterday. Yes, so we have added a Git ignore, but we have deleted the unused source code. So let's actually um, revisit one of our own, uh, which uh, one of the of the old commands that we've used yesterday. Uh, namely git restore. So currently we don't have that dummy cpp file here and I want to get that back. Um, git restore can not only um, move things from your staged area or restore your working tree so that you, you basically erase your changes, but you can also give it a source. Um, and I want to give it a source head minus two. That's the syntax that we have seen yesterday and call it with the dummy cpp. And what's that doing is it's basically restoring with the source of uh, from the commit before our last commit um, and basically just restore my dummy.cpp. As you can see, we've got our dummy cpp back. So we can add the dummy cpp and commit it and re add it first source code file so then we've got something to work with okay so let's create our new first new branch i'm going to call it doc for documentation so as we can see here basically nothing happened um, we're still on the same branch, so our most recent commit is still on main. <clears throat> but we've got a new reference, which is the new branch. In order to switch to that branch, we're going to call git switch doc. And now our head has changed. But what does that actually mean? Um, I've told you yesterday that we're going to take a look at the head file in our git directory. And that's what we're going to do now. So let's move into the Git directory and take a look at what the what the head file contains. So our head file um, just contains one line, and it tells me that it's a reference to refs slash heads slash doc. So it's basically just another pointer to somewhere else. And where is that somewhere else? It's in the refs folder. As you can see here, um, our heads, all the possible heads that we can be in are currently doc and main. And let's actually take a look at what these files hold. Uh, cut doc, you can see that looks like a commit hash, 6c38. And also, let's also take a look at main. You can see, okay, this is the same thing. So. Currently, our doc and our main branch are references to the very same commit. And that is basically the same information that you would get from your git log. Um, my pretty print git log command that I'm using here. Okay. 
Um, if you want to directly um, create and switch to the branch, what, that's what like you're going to do most of the time, you can combine the two commands that I have issued, git branch and git switch, and just call git switch, switch with the dash C option, and that is going to directly create the, um, your new branch for you and switch your head to that new branch. <clears throat> okay, so what's going to happen if we then commit something on that new branch? Um, after one git commit, the reference or the branch that we were currently on is going to move uh, one step ahead, commit ahead, like you can see in the graphics here. So if we were to be on the feature branch, like documentation branch in our case right now, um, we would move the documentation branch one commit further, and our main branch is going to stay at the very same state that it has been in because we're not fiddling with the main branch. Uh, but we can also go uh, back and switch to main and commit there. And that is where our histories would um, diverge then. So we would have commits on our main branch that the feature branch knows nothing about, and we would have commits on our feature branch, what, what our uh, main branch does not know anything about. And in the very end, we're going to want to combine these things. <clears throat> but before we do that, um, we can obviously investigate what's happening, and we can do that with the git diff um, command. So let's go back to our terminal and open up our dummy file on the documentation branch. So we're currently on the documentation branch and I'm going to do what the documentation branch should be about. I'm going to add some document documentation here. And let's add it here. I'm not going to actually add some documentation, but I'm just going to um, do some changes to a file. So we can now git add and git commit, edit documentation to for our functions. Okay, so if we now take a look at our git log, we can see that doc has moved away one commit further. <clears throat> our main is still at re-edit first source code file, but our doc has moved one commit further. Okay. Okay, I promise to look at the diff, so let's call git diff main doc. And now you can see we can not only use git diff to look at changes between our current modifications and our head or the stage changes and our head, but we can also use git diff to compare changes between two different branches. So you can see here that our new branch basically added the documentation. That is exactly what we expected to do. Okay, but since things are not always going to be that easy, it's, you're going to work on, on different branches, uh, multiple branches, um, and in the end, you're not going to want to have different versions of your, of your program, but exactly one. So at the very end, we're going to need to merge things together. So that is what we want to end up with. <clears throat> so what does a merge do? Um, a merge basically integrates all of the commits that happen on one branch into another branch. And what you're usually going to do is you're going to call git merge with another branch in order to get all of these commits from the other branch and merge them into the branch that you're currently on. And you do that by calling git merge with the branch name. And that's basically the final step when implementing a new feature. Usually you're going to branch away implement some stuff, do that on, on the different branch because you don't really want to mess with the code that you know you're, it is working. And then in the end, you're going to merge into the main branch as soon as you've tested it. But since in the team, you're not going to be the only one, it could be that 
when you're working on some features and some other people are working on some features and you then merge things together, it could be that you've worked on similar lines of codes or the exact lines of codes and Git can then not resolve um, what is the right thing. Um, so is it from your fellow uh, team member or is, is your code the thing that should be in the final version or in the main branch? That is when you're, uh, when you're going to have a merge conflict, which you then need to resolve on your own. <clears throat> but let's stick to the basic thing. The basic thing that we're currently having is we have um, created a new branch and just simply committed on our new branch without doing something on main. If we then switch to main and git merge, th um, there's nothing uh, where a conflict can happen because we have just added one commit. And the basic thing to do there is just tell main, okay, integrate that commit too. And that's what's called a fast forward merge. So that's basically just a change of the branch reference. reference. Let's take a look at how this looks like. I've actually created a short log for us. Yes, so. Um, as you can see here, our main branch is on 6C38 and our new feature branch documentation is at FBE2. So let's go back to main, git switch main and git merge doc. As you can see, git tells me that that was fast forward, there were no issues and what git did in the background was it just updated the reference for main and that's it so that main points to FBE2. Okay. So that's what was uh, what's called an a fast forward merge. And the intent um, of the developers of Git is to branch and merge as often as possible so that you really just have these fast forward com uh, uh, fast forward um, merges because if you merge sooner, that's like the intent. The sooner you merge, the lower the possibilities that you're going to run into conflicts. Because the longer you stay on different branches, the more command, uh, the more lines of code you're going to touch, and the higher the possibility to run into conflicts. And that's what uh, if you are going to run in a conflict, that is what's called a true merge. So, okay, let, sorry, let me pull it back. <laughs> With a true merge, no conflict. There must, it could be that there are conflicts, but it does not need to be the case that there are conflicts. Conflicts. The true merge is just that you are merging two different commits into one, and not with the fast forward merge as we've seen it um, in practice just right now. So true merge would be if you would do something on the feature branch, do something on the main branch, and then merge these things together. If everything runs smoothly, Git will just um, do its thing, patch all of the new content together in a new commit, and it will even provide you with a, a new commit message. And it will move um, your head to that new merge commit. Okay, so let's let us take a look at um, that thing in action. So I'm going to uh, create a new branch called new feature, and with that, I'm going to uh, simply add another function called new feature, and that is going to std see out new feature. Okay. Okay, let's git add that and git commit that, edit new feature. And now let's take another look. Our new feature has um, stepped one commit ahead. Now we're going to do, add some changes to the main as well. So let's switch to main. 
and maybe do something to well, let's fix another source code issue git add dummy git commit fixed another uh, coding standard issue so we can now take a look at the difference between these two uh, oops, sorry git diff main and new feature as you can see here um new feature has some changes that our main fun uh, our main branch does not have and main has some changes that our new feature branch does not have but none of these are really conflicting uh, so we're at main and we're going to want to merge our new feature since we're done with it and as i said um since git knows that this is a merge commit git will al already provide you with the correct uh like the correct or a, a possibility for a commit message which is um merge branch new feature into main so we can just write and quit and sorry git status our working tree is clean again and our log um, tells me that there were two branches the new feature and the main branch and they have been merged so new feature has been merged to main okay that was like um the case where everything went smoothly your team member has team members have only worked on different parts of the code no conflict happened <clears throat> but what if a conflict happens so the possibility of merge conflicts is always, is always is obviously given because you're working on the on, on the same source code files and the, uh could be that some team some of some one of your team thinks i need to make some changes here in order to adapt the class to the new functionality that i'm implementing for example and another one of your team thinks okay well i need to add that member to the class and then you're basically working on the exact same lines of code and that is where your merge conflict happens uh, and git cannot really understand the logic of of your changes so git can't definitely tell okay do i need to put something together and even be syntactically right and so on and so forth so it would just tell you okay sorry a conflict happened here um human do your work and fix that <clears throat> and in the case of a three-way merge we're going to have three different versions um the common ancestor where we are the other branch mer uh, branched away the changes that we have done and the changes that the other branch that we have that we are going to merge into uh that we are going to merge in our branch has introduced okay so let's take a look at an example um we are going to switch back to our new feature branch and we are going to make new feature uppercase Save and quit that. A new feature should be uppercase. And let's introduce another change. So we're going to, uh, let's just do a real error code here and git add dummy git commit so we have changed the exit code to real error code because i think minus one is better than returning one okay so we have done our things on on our new uh, feature branch someone else or uh, we ourselves um, can then do uh, implement some changes on the main branch and in order to show you that something that where conflict can happen i'm going to 
change that to a two and just say that, oops, get that dummy, git commit, uh, changed exit code of main to proper error code because we're complying to some team rules or whatever. Okay. So our two branches, <clears throat> I have now diverged. Our new feature branch is at changed exit code to a real error code. And our main is a changed exit code of main to a proper error code. Let's now merge new feature into a main. Now Git has detected that one of the branches introduces changes to a certain line of code and the branch that we're currently on has changes on that line of code as well. So the automatic merge failed. We need to fix conflicts and then commit the result. And <clears throat> I actually forgot something, um, what I wanted to show you here. Um, so I'm going to abort the merge. So whenever you run into conflicts and you think, okay, ooh, there shouldn't be any conflicts, um, since Git knows the history of your files, um, you can just simply git merge dash dash abort and you're back in safety. And you're back to safety. What I actually wanted to show you is um, something that I have actually overwritten in my global config. So let's merge new feature back into our main branch again. So we're running in this, into the same conflict. And what does that conflict actually look like now? We can open up our file with, with our editor. And Git is, has shoved in some strange looking characters. So it tells me that some changes um, came from our head, which is the, re the change of return one to return two. And from the new feature branch, uh, the change on, on the exact same line here came too. So Git doesn't know what to pick and we have to choose for Git. And here's something um, uh, related to the config that I want to, um, want to show you, which is going to make your life a bit easier because I always struggle whenever I run into a conflict, I always struggle um, to compare these two and what uh, or I often struggle to compare these two and derive the changes that were intended in, in the one branch and the other branch. And the thing that is going to help me with um, uh, getting an idea of what changes uh, have been intended there, I want Git to show me the common ancestor too. So in order to do that, we're just quitting out of that and deport the merge again and introduce that config that I've just had resetted. Um, so we're going to change the conflict style to div3. This also already tells you, okay, div3, I actually want the three different versions of uh, which are part of our conflict. So let's get merge our new feature here again. So once again, merge conflict, and now let's take a look. Okay, <clears throat> so looks kind of looks the same and but just um, with some more information. So we're still having these strange little characters uh, with uh, the information about, these ch about the changes that are on our current branch, but we also get the information about how our common ancestor looked like. So I know that uh, on, on one branch, we have changed the return code from one to two. And on the other branch, we have changed the return code from one to minus one. And in order to fix that conflict, you can just simply fix it within the file and remove all of that strange characters and all of the unwanted code. So let's leave it as minus one. My editor does not nag me anymore about things that are syntactically incorrect. And now we can just simply uh, write and quit. Now let's take a look at git status. Git status that tells me that 
dummy is both modified, um, but we have already fixed that, so we can just git add. Now our dummy file is staged. We're back to our usual workflow. We can then git commit, and since git knows that we are currently in, in a doing a merge commit, it gives me um, the expected commit message already. So it, it, it knows that we're merging a branch. So I can just save and quit, and we're back to the normal state of our, of our repository. Okay, so what did we cover so far? We have, to, we, we have uh, we've used different branches now. Um, we have used different branches to introduce different things um, and not uh, fiddle with the thing that we know that is working. So um, the main branch that we were working on sort of holds all of the uh, source code that we know that is tested and that works. And whenever we branch away, for example, with our new feature branch, we are trying out new things. We're testing new things, implementing new features, or fixing bugs. And as soon as we're done with fixing, implementing, adding features, or whatever, and have these things tested, we can uh, move those things and merge those things back into the main branch where we know this is our holy land where everything's fine and everything's okay. And different things can happen. So what we've seen are fast forward merges where basically nothing was added to our main um, in comparison to when we have diverged away from it. So the only thing that Git had to do was take the reference to the old main where we have diverged away and just moved it uh, forward uh, the amount of commits that we have added on the new branch that we have merged. So that is the fast forward thing, <clears throat> most basic type of merge. But it could be the case that someone, uh, while you were working on your feature, someone else finished um, their feature and had it added into main. So th that is where we are dealing with true merges. So where really two different versions of code have to be merged together. And that can either happen silently with Git doing all of the work where no conflicts happen. You, the one team uh, worked on like server side code, you worked on client side code. You didn't really fiddle around in things that the other things that the other team is working on and they have not um, changed code that you were working on so no conflicts everything fine and the thing where you're going to run into troubles most of the time is when you're working on source code and some other uh, team member is working on the exact same lines of code and that is when a kid conflict can happen uh, in order to resolve um, such uh, git conflicts you can also use a so-called git merge tool <clears throat> you can uh, start your git merge tool with git merge tool, as I just did in the console. Um, and this is going to open up some um, program that you have got on your computer, which is going to give you like three different windows where you can see the exact same thing that I've just shown you in the file. So on the left side, you're most of the time going to have one of the, uh, the changes. Uh, on the right side, you're going to have the changes that you have implemented and in the middle bar, in the middle column, you're going to have the changes that, uh, uh, that's from your common ancestor. <clears throat> but I actually think that it's kind of an overkill. So the only thing that you really need to do is fix your code in the end. And all of these merge tool, or at least the ones that I have used so far, aren't really that straightforward to use because they color things differently and then you don't know, okay, what is my actual file that I'm working on? Uh, so what, what is like the end product that I um, actually need in the end? So is it in the middle column or is it the left? Um, my, it could be different to the different merge tools and so on and so forth. 
but in the end, you're, you're just working on the source code and Git gives you all of the information that you need in the one file that had conflicts. So I, my, my tip to you is just do it within that file and don't really use a Git merge tool, but feel free to, to look into that. I think melt is the thing to go on Ubuntu as far as I'm aware. And it should be pre-installed or should come with Git when you install Git. Okay, let's advance with the slides as well. So you can see here, this is what um, the conflict looked like without uh, the diff3 option. You can see Git is um, showing you the conflicting hunks. So these hunks are the same hunks that we have seen yesterday when um, adding changes line by line with the git add option. And it shows you the changes from head and the other branch. And in the end, after you've resolved all of your things, you call git commit. Git is already provided you with the uh, proper commit message. <clears throat> okay. Um, so another use case or another thing that could possibly happen while you're working on your new feature is that someone comes along and says, okay, well, I found an issue um, in your source code. You need to fix that. Um, please go to main uh, and fix that. There's one slight issue with that. Um, as soon as you're going to want to go back into your main while you have changes on your new branch that are not committed, Git wants to update your working tree, like this, your sandbox in order to make it fit the main branch again. And if there are some changes that you have not committed yet, and we know that Git only knows about changes that you have committed, so it is only putting things into the history that you actually commit, it could be that things uh, are being overwritten when you switch to a different branch that you want, don't want to be overwritten. But so the on, one, one thing to resolve that is commit changes, give it some random commit message, I'm still working on it or whatever, and then switch to branch. Or you can use a git stash. <clears throat> okay, so as I said, um, when you switch a branch, it could be that things have, uh, are, are being overwritten, so git will refuse to actually switch. And git stash gives you the possibility to stash away these changes. Um, so what actually happens when you stash away changes? Um, git stash is going to basically internally create a commit for you where it saves all of the records that um, are staged and unstaged on your tracked files and then rolls back your current head so that we know if everything from our uh, tracked files is saved in a commit, which is that sort of special stash commit, we know that we're fine, our working tree is going to be clean, and we can switch branches since if our working tree is clean, Git knows of all of all the, uh, all the changes that we've um, done, and nothing can be overwritten. <clears throat> and after you've, done, uh, after you've done all of your work on the main branch, after you have fixed that issue, committed it, uh, merged it in, uh, into, into uh, the main branch, you can then go back to that feature branch that you've been working on and git stash apply. And git will then undo that commit, that stash commit that you've made and uh, provide you with all of the changes that you had when you left your branch. So let's take a quick look at how that would look like. So we're in main after we have merged, our working tree is clean. Uh, and we can just switch to our new feature branch and maybe since we are, <clears throat> we're also going to need to update the documentation. We can just put the documentation here as well and save and quit. And now we are in a state where we have a modified file. 
which has not been committed obviously and now someone comes along and tells me to fi fix the bug. So what I need to do then is switch to main. But as soon as I want to switch to main, it tells me error. Some of the local changes that you have on, on, on dummy.cpp would be overwritten by switching. It currently says by checkout because usually you would use the git checkout command in order to switch branches. But in the very new version, you're using git switch. Um, so it should, should actually say it would be overwritten by a switch because we're issuing git switch here. Um, and it tells me, please commit your changes or stash them before you switch branches. So that is what we're going to do. We are going to git stash and we are going to give it the safe uh, flag here, basically, and some string like similar to our to a commit message VIP. Um, work in progress, adding, oops, git stash safe VIP, adding documentation for new feature. Uh, git now tells me that it has saved my working directory and the index state, and that was the exact thing that I wanted to, to do. So my working tree is clean now. Git has taken everything, that every, every change that I've made and stashed it away, hidden somewhere. So I can now git switch to main and everything's working fine. So I can now uh, do all of the bug fixing that I was asked to do and then go back to my new feature branch and continue working off uh, where, where I've left off. And in order to do that, I'm going to do uh, call git stash apply. And <clears throat> git will then call git status for me as well to tell me, okay, these were the changes where you've left off. It's automatically doing git status as well so that you can see, okay, these are the things that I had stashed away. <clears throat> but what if um, uh, you want to take a look at the changes because fixing the bug took a week or so and you're you don't really remember what the correct uh, or what that stash was that you actually wanted to. Um, uh, that that was the st uh, the status that you had as when you when you left the branch. So let me just quickly stash it again, and I'm now going to um, to not give it the save option and the commit message, so that you can see if you don't save your stash, but just tell Git to stash it away, Git will. Um, Git will give it an automated commit message, uh, a stash message, so to say, um, which is work in progress on branch, then the commit hash and the commit subject line. Okay, so we now have our things stashed away. Our status is working tree clean. So we, were, we would be able to switch branches. But let's take a look at what different um, stashes we currently have. For that, we can do a git stash list. So we can uh, observe two things here. Um, first and foremost, the stash is not limited to just one stash. So if you're working on different branches and um, the reason that you had to change back to another branch was not that you needed to fix some issue, but you weren't really going anywhere um, and you don't didn't want to commit so you've just stashed it away. So Git will incrementally um, <clears throat> create those stashes for you so it will not override your last stash, stash with a new one. And since we git stash applied and did not git stash pop would, would have removed the stash as well, it's still showing up in our stash list here. So we have that one stash that I have named as VIP adding document adding documentation for a new feature and the one that I've just created. And if you are not really sure which of these um, stashes you want to use, you can just call git stash show with the dash p option and give it one of these stashes. So let's give it uh, one. And git stash show with the dash p option is then going to 
show you all of the changes that you were working on while you uh, when you stashed it away. Okay. <clears throat> so that's the stash. Let's continue with um, what I have on the slides as well. Um, so git stash apply will recover the changes you stashed last, but you can actually git have multiple stages as we've just seen. Um, the stash kind of works like a like a stack, so first in, first out. Um, but you can recover, as I just did, um, you can recover any of the stashes um, by giving it the correct stash number. Okay. <clears throat> and another use case, something that happened to me um, and I wanted to include in, 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 in the lecture, was that sometimes I was so eager to work um, that I forgot to switch branches. So I had, I've done some work on the main branch and then I thought, oh, I shouldn't really push that to main. Um, I should rather push that to a new branch or work in a new branch so that other people can actually take a look at. Um, in order to do that, in order to move some commits to a different branch or sorry, something that you have not committed yet to a different branch, you can stash it away. And then with git stash branch and the branch name and the corresponding stash, git will move all of these things to a new branch and let you work on a new branch. And if um, you want to into uh, if you, for example, introduce new files, uh, while you're doing that, and you want the, those to be included in the stash as well. You need to give it the dash u option so that the stash will also include all of the untracked files that you have had in your directory. Okay, yeah, that, as it says here, that's very useful if you have accidentally started working on the main branch, for example. Okay. Um, yesterday I told you that. Um, git reset dash dash hard is um, basically erasing all of the commits and the changes that you have um, implemented with these commits back to that commit that you pass. But I also said that git is basically only adding things to your repository and is never actually uh, dropping those things without telling you so that you can't recover them. And today we have also talked about uh, references. So we have had these references with different branches and so on and so forth. And um, in contrast to the log that we have seen quite often, the log which uh, gives you the history of your, um, of your project, the reference log in contrast will tell you which branches you have switched to. And so it basically is going to tell you all of the paths that your head uh, has taken while you were working. So let's take a look at what the ref log um, looks like for our project here. <clears throat> so uh, it looks quite different to our actual log because it's just um, logging where I have moved to. So have I checked out the branch or switched to a new branch that is listed here, for example? Uh, then I have apparently reset it. Yes, that was when we were stashing, since the stash is also going to reset my head like we, like we wanted to do. And what else? Um, I have moved from new feature to main. All of these things are um, are locked here. And since um, these things are locked and you know where to look for when you need a commit, for example, um, a commit hash of something that you have erased via git reset hard. And we know that branches are basically just a different word for these references and references are just commits. Um, you can use git merge to undo a git reset dash dash hard. 
So if you run into a situation where you have accidentally um, erased some work because you thought it's not fitting or um, you want to completely remove it and then suddenly you think, okay, well, I shouldn't really have done that because actually I just need to uh, fix that very small thing. Um, you can just look up the commit hash in the reference log since it's going to be tracked there and just merge that back into your branch that you're currently working on. So the ref log is, so to say, your savior. Since the ref log is just going to track where you have been in the past. And in order to remove some stuff, you need to actually have been there some days, uh, sometimes in the, in the past. So um, you're going to have a reference to it somewhere. And that somewhere is the reference log. Okay. <clears throat> So in order to work with branches and not get stalled because um, you run into some issues while working on branches and you um, can't move away from this, uh, your branch, you can use git stash. And just in order to have it mentioned, uh, I wanted to show you that there is like your, your savior, um, the git ref log that you can use in order to undo some erasing that you have done. Um, and you actually want to undo. So these are two little handy things that you can use when working with branches. Um, but the reason um, why we are actually using these branches or one of the reasons why we're using branches is so that we can share different versions of our project, of our source code with some remote repositories. And that is what we're going to take a look. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Here we have it. Even if you get reset to an older commit, you can still undo that. Okay. So for our last topic today, we're going to take a look at what these remotes actually are. Um, a remote repository is, an, is some kind of external server. In, in, in with, when we compare, compare it with Dropbox, as we had it in the graphic, um, that remote server would be the thing that you push your changes to, like the communication node that you and your team member, team members use. So that is your version of your project hosted somewhere in the internet, for example, on GitHub or GitLab. And this is where you git pull and git push. You git pull from your remote repository or you git push to that remote repository. Uh, as I said, for most part of uh, your work at university, you will always be provided with framework. So most of the time you're going to initialize your frameworks by git cloning. And git clone um, is initializing the repository on your local machine and is then adding that remote that you're cloning it from as the origin remote. So that is why all of these uh, is in, in guidelines. When you git clone something, you can then git push to origin because git is automatically creating that remote for you. But we're going to take a look into how you can do that manually. Um, with git remote dash v, you, um, you can look at the list of all of the remotes. Because since we are, we are going to use git in a distributed in a distributed version, uh, fashion, we don't want to restrict ourselves to be able to only push to one of these remotes. So you can add multiple remotes into your repository. For example, if you have like a public repository on GitHub and a private repository, and in the private repository, you fiddle around with stuff, you test out things, but there are certain branches that you don't really want to um, be uh, readable by the public, you would work on your private repository, your private remote in order to share things with your um, team members. And then if you uh, have a final version, version 1.0 of your um, source code, you can push it to the public repository, uh, public remote repository. 
Okay. Let's quickly discuss what what's actually happening with a git push and git pull. And then we're going to create a repository on GitHub and <clears throat> take a look at what's happening in the background. Okay, um, uh, as soon as you're done with, with, with your work and, you're ba and you're, um, you have some feature that you've finished, you can push that to a new remote branch on one of the remote um, repositories that you have added to your, to your work, uh, to your local repository. Um, but if there are some changes on the remote repository that you don't really have, or that don't, you don't have on your local repository, um, Git real refuse to accept the new commits that you are trying to push to the remote repository. It's always good to start with a git pull. And what is a git pull actually doing? A git pull internally will at first fetch the data from the remote repository. So it, a git pull will actually git fetch some new data from a remote, namely from the remote that you pass it. Uh -huh. Change again. This will only download those, these changes, not this on slide download these changes. Um, a git fetch will fetch all of the new changes that have been introduced on that remote server, which can then be uh, merged into your local branch. But usually you're going to want to pull all of these changes and merge them directly. And that is what git pull is doing for you. So if you call git pull uh, remote main or git pull origin main, you're downloading the branch from the origin remote repository and you're merging it into your uh, local branch. Okay, so let's actually see that in action. I'm going to move over to my browser now. For that, I guess I need to stop with the automatic scene switcher. Okay, so um, you should be able to see my browser now. And I'm creating a new repository on GitHub and I'm making it public and I don't want Git to add any of the files. So I can now create the repository. And Git already tells me which ways I can um, add that remote repository into my local repository. And we are going to use that version here since we already have our local repository. And <coughs> <coughs> the way to add a new remote as a reference is to issue git remote add or origin, for example, with the git URL. So let's copy that over. Uh, can't forget, forgot to copy it. Okay. Oh, okay. That's a pity. Okay, the terminal that I'm working in does not support my clipboard. So let's just type it over. Um, we are going to issue git remote add and we're going to call that origin. And the URL is https github.com github.com slash stefan branching lecture dot git slash branching lecture dot git okay so we have told git to add that remote uh, remote repository and with git remote dash v we can take a look at it at the url that we've added so um, since our remote repository is actually not um, 
it does, does not have any code yet, um, Git, GitHub will tell us, uh, will show us that quick setup. So we, have, we don't have any branches um, on that remote repository yet. So what we can do is we can just um, push our local branch. So I've called it origin and we're going to push main. I need to enter my credentials. <clears throat> and Git has taken all of the things that I have done on my main branch locally here, and it has created a new branch on that remote repository, and it's called main. So let me switch over to the browser. As you can see here, um, we have got 14 commits and our git ignore file and our dummy.cpp file. And the list of commits here is uh, mirroring the log that we have locally on our repository. <clears throat> okay. Um, we are going to take a look into what this, um, what the remotes are doing in the background too. So we are going to switch over to git refs. So we're taking a look into the internals of our repository here on our local machine now. And I've mentioned yesterday that we are going to take a look into the refs directory. <clears throat> and as you can see here, um, We've got uh, one directory called heads and heads contains all of the possible uh, head references that we can have in our local machine. But we also have, we also now have a remotes directory here, which lists a list of all of the remotes that I have added so far. And we have, we only have the origin, uh, remote added and currently our remote origin also does only have one branch and that is that main branch here. And if we take a look into the heads main, we can see that it's a pointer to uh, 90 BC. And let's also take a look at remotes origin main and it holds the exact same commit. So as we can see internally, um, the remotes are just another, uh, another layer of um, pointers that we can point to, and they happen to be uh, possibly on other servers. So there's actually no really, there, there aren't any new things happening here. It's just that we have uh, the layer of connecting to another server here. Uh, in order to give you an, uh, give you a better idea of uh, of how that is working in the background, let's um, come up with some changes that some other team member um, could have done on uh, on the remote repository. So I'm going to directly use GitHub now in order to create some files and a branch. So let's call it testing. Find or create testing, create branch. Oh. Okay, so you actually should you shouldn't really do that um, when you're really working on a project. But I'm trying to mimic work that some other um, team member has done, so I'm doing it uh, via the interface now. So we're going to add a new file, and we're going to call that uh, I don't know lips.h and let's just put some stuff in there include vector and git github actually gives me the possibility to add and commit files directly via that via their um, interface okay perfect so we have um, added lips.h and github tells me that this branch is one commit ahead of main Take a look at the commits. 
we can see that it has created the create lips.h commit. Okay, so let's go back to our terminal. <clears throat> and let's see the git fetch act, uh, git fetch um, subcommand in action. So we can git fetch all of the changes that are uh, available on our remote repository by calling git fetch origin. And as you can see here, um, git is telling me again that there's a new branch and the new branch is testing and the reference that we have on our machine testing points to the remote reference origin testing. But so far, no merging has been done. So if we take a look at the git log, um, nothing has been actually merged into, <clears throat> into the branch that we are on. Okay. So let's see what the presentation has to offer. So, um, Okay, there's some some uh, some of the information that we have already covered. So with git add a remote add and the short name for your remote and the git URL, you can um, you can add remotes um, to your repository on your local machine, and that can be useful if you want to work on a private and a public repository on the same time, and you want to keep some of your branches within that private repository, but still be able to share them with your team member, whilst having some of the branches that can be openly discussed um, on uh, via GitHub repository, for example. And those were, would be the branches that you push to that public repository. Okay, um, are there any questions? Okay, git remote show, that would be interesting. Uh, to give you some information of, about the remote, but that's just going to list your um, the URL and the short name that you gave it. So I encourage you to test that out. And I think, I guess, um, push and pull are these things that you are frequently going to use uh, at university, since all of the changes that you are going to introduce uh, while working and um, you want these changes to be then evaluated by the lecturer or by a tutor, you are going to push them to that, to that server um, so that they can have a look at it. So push and pull, I guess, is something that you are going to use uh, frequently, but it's just the final things that you are doing. At the very end, you're finished with your work. Okay, um, <clears throat> as promised, in the very end, I have got that, I've got the summary for you. Um, so we've talked about what a uh, nonlinear uh, workflow is. We have uh, talked a lot about branches um, and what these Git references are. So branches are basically just reference to different commits. And we have uh, taken a look into uh, some simple forms of merges and merge conflicts, and we have resolved them. And in order to um, be more flexible with working with branches, we also um, used the stash once, and we have taken a look into the ref log. Okay, are there any questions about all of the stuff that we have talked about today? Um, I'm going to mention it. Feel free to write me an email. Um, I'm going to put the email into the, strip, the, the description again, and all of that of the slides are going to um, be available via my GitHub uh, repository as soon as we have finished with our third lecture tomorrow. Uh, thanks for watching, and I hope we'll, uh, we'll see each other, or I'm going to see you in the chat tomorrow. Bye.